everybody, we're live. <laughs> and I'm joined tonight by Gwillem and Packrat. Hey so, there. Hello. Gwillem, can you still hear us? Oh dear, I seem to have lost Gwillem's audio. No, Gwillem, come back to us. He was here just a second ago, I swear. <laughs> It's actually Gwillem's fortress that we're looking at right now. Uh, let me hang on. Let me see what's going wrong. Gwillem. Oh, hardware crash. Oh, no. Okay. Let's move over to... <laughs> Timing. <laughs> Timing, absolutely. <laughs> oh, well. Um, right. Let's move over. Packrat, we'll move over to your fortress. <laughs> oh, I guess we're going to go there then. Okay. <laughs> Right, while we wait for Gwillem to join us, Packrat, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, let everybody know where you are a returning guest. Uh, we had a lot of fun with you here last time. And yeah. would you like to introduce yourself? Let everybody know where they can find you. Um, uh, well, I'm pa Packrat. I'm part of the Minecraft crew from a long time ago. I've been playing games and streaming them for quite a while now. Uh, find me on YouTube under uh, Packrat0013, um, and I've been playing Dwarf Fortress for um, since the Steam release. I've been having a lot of fun with that. I tried playing it before that, but it didn't go very well. So I've been enjoying the heck out of the Steam release, though. I haven't played like thousands of hours or anything like that. I've more played. Um, this is like my third fortress, I think it is. The second one I actually cared about. And I've actually pretty much finished what I was doing with this one. I was about to start doing but I heard there's going to be a new release coming out soon that's going to uh -huh. change things up a little bit. So, um, And I'm quite interested in this topic because I haven't done I, I, just like with the last topic I didn't do a lot <laughs> with that one either. But I have a lot of animals and not doing not doing a heck of a lot with them except milking everything that ha that, that can be milked. That, that, that's about it so have you got into any any war training anything like that i let some dogs get trained for war training but the mm -hmm. thing is that uh, my actual place is this is the same same one as last time mm -hmm. if you if we go to the okay let's just pause it here so we can actually like move and center on fort we're still in the middle of that tiny little ah, island right there yeah 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 Nothing attacks us here. I kind of intended this fort to be one a, 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 a training fort for me to learn the learn the ropes a little bit, and two, I intended that to be like the rich fortress in this world, and it's done pretty well for that for that part. So uh -huh. without digging too deep to make make it too risky, I wanted it to be one that's going to exist later on. Yeah. So yeah. What um, kind of wild animals have you got in the vicinity? Wallace. Koalas. <laughs> Koalas and wolves, that's about it. I haven't tried kept capturing them or anything because I haven't needed to because there hasn't been a lot of threats. So, yeah, I, I, I'm going to take a lot of the stuff we learned today and take it to the next fortress. I, but like I said, I, I just got lots of dogs. Yeah. And, but I got a lot of dogs. <laughs> yeah, but this is the fortress of Complex Bridge, which is why the Complex Bridge set up that, that, we, got, that we got there. I don't see, are you actually on the screen right now? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't show me here. Okay. Uh, the Discord version doesn't show me at that. Okay, that's fine. Would you um, Would you like to give us a fortress tour? Yeah, sure. So right, that that would be the front. The, this the, the little trap area that I. This is the last things I got set up. Um, and I over here at the end of the trap area, I got a little area. This is gonna be like my my finishing touch. This is gonna be the treasure room, where all the best goods end, end up. I well, I've, I had to like think about it in this game because there's not really anything that you could do for a vault, yeah. per se. Since you can put make a gigantic vault and you can make some uh, very elaborate traps and stuff there, but when it comes down to it, someone's just got to pull a lever to open the door. So <laughs> uh, I figured that the best thing to do is just put it at the end of your trap tunnel. Uh, yeah, that's what I've done with that. And uh, you got the... Um, barracks over here i just started setting up archers because i just wanted to start working on that a lot of the stuff is still, still just uh in training for still i'm i i'll admit i'm still learning this is the um dungeons uh -huh. i actually learned from some some other people that it's a good idea to set up where they got, they got the food in each one of these 
where they, they like to have have access to food and to a mm -hmm. chair and stuff like that whenever they get stuck. Unfortunately, no one's been getting in trouble. No one's even been stealing anything. <laughs> um, they're very they're very happy in this place. I only get like one or two people that that get that get angry, uh, mainly because this the, I got, I got a, a mist generator going down this this thing all the time the, for, mm -hmm. for the stairs. So that yeah. seems that that seems to have made them so happy over the long term. It's not, that I've never had any issues. Cool. Um. What else, what else can I show you guys? Uh, let's see. I want to just hit buttons here. And oh, I remember the big thing that you guys liked last time is I still have this. Mm-hmm. I've been working on that. Everything is pretty much smoothed out by now. So this is the this was the first one. Uh, and then if we go. Oh yeah, that's that's come on quite some way. Yes, it has. Uh, like like <clears throat> I said last time, my mm -hmm. envisioning of how a dwarf would actually go mining and to play and not play to 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 do this yeah the dwarf would be going down mining for veins of minerals and and you know doing what dwarf do, dwarf does which is mining and, and get, getting materials and, and like um, smithing and all that stuff and along the way while they're doing that they would just um that would become their tunnels so I've, I've done a more branching structure for, for everything. I, I wanted there to be more branching structure and less of big straight lines for, yeah, for everything. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted it to look like they just took the veins and then added things to them, which is essentially what I did. Uh, I think the next one, I, now I got to remember where the next one is. I think it's up here. Yeah, and then, then I, this was the second area that I had them branch off of. So if I was going to do any more, this, there was a vein over here, so I would just add branches off to that one. But we ended up having quite a few um, <laughs> places for people, people to live already. So uh, let me just zoom back in. i got to remember how to zoom back in. I don't do that very often. Okay, there we go. So... That was the main thing. I I actually took your advi some advice on the last one and expanded my out uh, my temple. So uh -huh. there's a, there's room now. They have floor <laughs> space and they're 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 like valuable and they actually like them. And this cool. is always where the dogs seem to end up too for some odd reason. <laughs> um. So so th th this has gotten this has improved a lot since the last time, inclu including the value of the floor. I, I, I figured out that the best way to improve the value of these places is just throw gold on plates on the floor, and they seem to love that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah uh, i'm back on hey by the way. Quillen. welcome back <laughs> welcome back sorry about that <laughs> that's okay <laughs> got a giant area there smoothing uh have I you seen that... have you seen any dancing in your in your temples yet pakra i have not seen dancing you said it's a rare thing and it seems to be a rare thing it has not happened yeah not that i've seen it it's fleeting yeah and if you're not there it's it, it doesn't happen so <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, that that has not been seen. Um, yeah, that's that's the main part of my fortress that that I that I could really say mm -hmm. that's truly interesting to me. So, um, let's, but let's coming on, on the coming on really well. Yeah, thank you. I, I did spend spend a lot of time on it. A few <laughs> like f uh, fumbles that had to be restarted, but I think we did okay. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, and Gwillem, uh, would you like to introduce yourself, let everybody know where they can find you on the internet and, um, and tell us about how, how long you've been playing Dwarf Fortress, how you got into it? Certainly, yeah. Um, so I, my name is Gwillem, as you said. You can find me here on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash G-W-I-L-Y-M. Um, and that's pretty much it. I just I started streaming about a year ago, uh, so I don't have any presence elsewhere on really on Twitter or, or YouTube or anything like that. Um, I first started playing Dwarf Fortress years ago. I think it may may have been version thirty four or something like that. I don't remember wow. the exact version numbers, um, but I just remember it was something that I stumbled across maybe. Thanks to perhaps either Blind or Blue Zest playing through their streams. Um, and I remember being on a work trip at some point and I had just a, an old laptop. I was looking for something to play and, and Dwarf Fortress ran on, on it. So <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, I booted up Dwarf Fortress and before I knew it, my weekend stay in a hotel had just become me um, playing Dwarf Fortress that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, that, that's about it. We, I, I tried streaming it a couple of times before the the, the Steam release, and I, I couldn't quite get back into it. And then when the Steam release happened, I was like fully motivated. Yeah. Um, and I've streamed a lot since. Uh, although I will say, like the last three weeks or so, I've been I've had some tonsillitis, which is, it might be sound might might be why I sound a bit weird. Um, <laughs> I'm still recovering from that, just like you yourself, Sal, okay. recovering yeah, from a cold. <laughs> indeed. I'm still Ugh. all, all, um, still somewhat croaky. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it feels like I've got a couple of marshmallows at the back of my mouth. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> mm. uh, and pack rat and honey have not been well either. Oof. Yeah, it's all been going around. Um, so, Gwilym, should we... Uh, chat won't have seen your audience. Uh, sorry, your sorry, the audience won't have seen your fortress. Um, can we try doing a screen share with you again? Yeah, I think it's back up and running now. Let me just have a look. Um, we'll see if we can switch over to your fortress. Here we go. Marvelous, got you. Marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the because of the, my my streaming setup, the only way for me to get the game capture. Um, is to stream it through my my lair streaming setup. So uh, yeah, <laughs> so we've got your see. avatar. <laughs> yeah, got my avatar to run around as well. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but I won't be doing all the the sort of stream shenanigans. Um, so yeah, this is the um, this is the, the start of my first sort of mega project fort that I've ever worked on. And if I scroll up, like we see, this is like the tip of the iceberg here, like a couple of rooms that are just situated outside of where it's like the entrance area and the trading outpost but over to the side we see a large structure that's starting to take place uh which is a, the beginnings of a coliseum oh so we nice. pull up um this is all made from clay bricks i've got some like glass windows going in and multi-floor that, that's going to go up and up and up and a, like a fighting arena with a false floor and we'll be putting all sorts of things in that arena um whatever we can capture in terms of enemies or wild beasts or, or mega beasts um giant animals etc etc um and i'm playing with a a mod that allows you to play as kobolds uh, -huh. uh which i think you had um blue zest on the other day yeah, yeah. right i think he's, he's been playing the same the same mod um, it's just really, it's really just a reskin. So they they play very much like cobalt, like uh, like dwarves, except they're they're cobalts. Um, and they also happen to have giant spiders as a domesticated animal that's available to them. <laughs> <laughs> so we've managed a giant to get roof a, a spider. Yeah. So <laughs> we have a instead of a giant cave spider, we have a giant roof spider. Um, I'm just playing around with an idea to see whether this cave spider situated on the roof surrounded by a wall whether it will successfully um shoot out of the air annoying like flying creatures that come down to the to oh. the base and try and steal things um i have no idea yet if it will work i haven't seen it work but um yeah and we just, yeah just got this entrance sort of laden with cage traps to try and catch whatever comes along mm -hmm. um very very minimal defenses at the moment population is capped to 40 just as we build things up, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can push down in. So, so this is very much a, a minimal, very compact fort setup. So rather than sprawling out into many, many rooms and caverns, um, I, I've developed like a, a very central shaft arrangement where mm -hmm. I just get everything running sort of efficiently. And then once things are built up, I can then start carving things out aesthetically if I want. Yeah. So I can just push straight down. We have a central staircase. It's going right down, 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 down. Everything's kind of centered around that. I can pull that back up and start again. We have our uh, clay collection area, just three kilns that are set to just collect clay from this nearby clay deposits here. Mm -hmm. And we have our three very sort of medium sized i guess farm plots that is feeding all 40 kobolds mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of the animals as well um we have our uh, underground grazing which i believe we're going to talk about today yeah um so some of the grazing animals that i have in here alpacas and llamas etc that i've just collected 
as well as um, a bunch of giant animals that we have purchased from the elves. Ah. So we've kept the elves on our good side for now because they've been bringing us giant animals for trade, such as the giant emu, giant lions, giant jaguars, <laughs> giant honey badgers, <laughs> raccoon, <laughs> giant flying squirrels. Um, and we did have a giant chipmunk, but unfortunately they died seemingly of natural causes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we pushed down through like real bare bones. Had a like, giant nut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my sort of patented hive open plan bedroom setup, which has now been completed uh, thanks to a legendary engraver going through and making these into like personal palaces wow so um, you without walls and what only a one by three space you get in a personal palace there yeah some of them nice so they, yeah <laughs> one by three bedroom allocations so someone's sleeping here uh she is content after sleeping in a great bedroom some of them will have thoughts about personal palaces sure uh, mainly because of the quality of the furniture that's involved, as well as the engravings, uh -huh. that, if you can see underneath there. Yeah, so engraved on the floor is an exceptionally designed image, etc., etc., etc. So it's like having Renaissance art on the yeah. floor of your three by one sort of barrack bedroom, you know. Uh -huh. um, but then we got a, a bunch of other ones out here for unhappy kobolds because we had a, an unfortunate start to this fort. <laughs> <laughs> where we lost quite a few due to my mismanagement. Okay. So thankfully they're uh, they're no longer like down in the red and orange unhappy. They're, they're mostly content at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we go down into our industrial area where we have six magma kilns all churning out clay bricks as fast as they can and a bunch of other um, stone and metalwork areas. Um, and this is a little bit high up for magma, Right, but we've actually ferried magma up via minecarts and placed them um, down in little pits. So sitting on top of those pits is the uh, the magma workshops. Just getting indefinitely powered by a little bit of um, magma that we brought up uh -huh. from the depths. Um, food stockpile, which I keep increasing, increasing in size because of the, all the animals that we're keeping. Mm -hmm. um, need to be culled off every now and then. So most of the food that we have is actually in the form of like raw meat uh, sitting around and raw fish. So I'm just putting all that in a food stockpile so it doesn't rot, which keeps getting larger and larger. Um, so yeah, all the animals that we've obtained breeding pairs of so far have put in their own rooms. Here we have giant bobcats this looks like about eight of them or so nine of them maybe and giant cave spiders look away mm -hmm. if you don't like spiders <laughs> we have a room full of them these are all going to be features of the um of the coliseum whenever we get that up and running as well as the the main attraction here this is lamb steel called the hail goals our uh trained hydra oh wow mm. giant dragon-like monster with seven biting heads um, the embark that we're on is actually their home. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, so we went out into the world and found them. Ah, <laughs> so you so, you embarked onto their lair. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, and it's a bit of a long story as how that is actually doable in a repeatable process. We can maybe touch on that later if we've got time. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that'd be good to know. Yeah. Um... But apart from that, it's mostly a standard fortress. Mm -hmm. um, if I push down, this, we got temple and and um, tombs and stuff and such like that. And we've um, one of the, the thing of uh, the, that we've been doing on stream is whenever some forgotten beasts appear in the caverns below, if they start fighting each other, we start a like a prediction. <laughs> uh, so we uh, we get the, the the people in the stream to bet channel points on who's going to win and then we memorialize the the loser or whatever so we actually have memorial slabs here for forgotten beasts oh, that's, not that's for really members of our fort so this is yeah exceptional granite memorial to yeah in memory of uh hodabi singusa went missing in the year 101 slayer of the forgotten beast which is 
apparently what you get when you memorialize a forgotten beast. They go missing. Right. <laughs> um, and we push down, push down, push down, and just see where we get ac access to our magma over here and like our little uh -huh. minecart magma filling room where there is actually minecarts in there, but because of a graphical bug, they're just yeah. invisible. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, pump underground and pump. Yeah. So that's cool, about cool. it. That's um, as much of an overview as I can think of giving. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gwilym, um the topic of today's conversation, um, we... This stream, the Saturday streams, are aimed more at newer players, but also to give people an idea of where they can go, how far you can take some of these things. And today's topic is all about animal grazing and animal training, animal acquisition, uh, all of those sorts of things. So mm -hmm. everything from how to train your dog to be a... Uh, a hunting dog or a war dog and why you might do that through to how to capture a hydra <laughs> and train it up yeah and sure what that, that means. That, that's a new thing to me <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so Gwilym if you don't mind would you do you fancy just taking the lead a little bit on this because I suspect you've done a lot more animal training than I have oh possibly yeah um so I haven't done much in the way of training for those specific purposes, like mm. uh, war training or um, or hunter training. So mainly all I've done is training for the purpose of getting training skills up. Ah. Um, so there isn't a lot to it apart from one, capture an animal in uh -huh. a cage trap. And that captured animal will become visible in here for example i have an echidna <laughs> i have a caged echidna that wandered into one of our traps and it is now located down underground in one of these cages i think it's yeah echidna cage here um so i guess a, a good housekeeping sort of thing with regards to caged animals and stockpiles um if we go and have a look at the... So this is a, a stockpile where um, animals that have been caged end up this little stockpile here, this 4x4. And the settings for that is actually uh, under animals. Mm -hmm. So rather than... Furni I think furniture is where may maybe cages might show up or something or constructed things. Um, if you want your trapped animals or enemies or anything like that to be put in a stockpile like taken away from where they were trapped originally uh and stored somewhere in your fort for use however you want to use them you'll want to be putting up uh an animal stockpile which will include everything from animals to like dwarves and and goblins yeah. and dragons <clears throat> and hydras basically any creature will show up in here um or you can say you know, none of them and just have empty cages, so that can be your empty cage stockpile. Um, although I haven't I haven't set that up specifically in this case, so we still actually have a couple of empty cages sitting around here. Um, but yeah, that will allow them to be located wherever you want and will get them away from wherever you're typically trapping things. Um, Although perhaps that's jumping too far ahead. Like, have we covered traps at all on on this, this sort done, of stream yeah. series? We've um, we've put down cage traps on a few on a few occasions. We did go through um, how to defend your fortress. Um, building cage traps was one of those things that we covered. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, cage traps, as you probably covered, are extraordinarily powerful. More powerful than you might imagine them, them to be in reality um they will trap just about anything as you can see we had a hydra there that was captured earlier and is now trained um it, you can capture dragons uh everything basically except for was it forgotten beasts and titans i think and anything uh, yeah, that's marked um, as trap we're avoid beasts. we're beasts yeah mm -hmm. yeah although there are um 
advanced techniques to actually get them trapped as well. Yeah. I'm not sure it's... if we'll be going into into that necessarily. I haven't done that myself, but I I plan to do it in this fort. I covered that in um I think it was the stream we did, yeah, with Zesty, where we were looking at weird beasts and hospitals. Mm-hmm. Um where if you wait for the weird beast to turn back into its natural form. As long as it's not somebody who is a part of your fortress, um, enemy or friendly, they'll just walk into a cage trap. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think I was there for that. Yeah, you were ah. testing like them moving out from like a little small room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I vaguely remember that. That's right. Yep. Um, but yeah, once you have a creature that is trapped in a cage, it's really then just a matter of having someone that is an, on the training labor. So, um, for example, animal trainer, like add new work, day, work detail if you want to make someone specific or mm-hmm. anyone in the fort. Otherwise, hunting related animal training, which I've already done up here. So I'll go back to them. So I've got a few that I'm trying to skill up. Uh, just randomly, so competent, competent, adequate, adequate. Mm-hmm. And then going into that creatures list. So Echidna, for example, clicking this button here, which is like a little uh, dog whistle by the looks of it. Um, select the trainer for Echidna. So you can either select someone specifically or any trainer or any uh, otherwise unassigned trainer. So in this case, I'm just going to say any trainer. Mm-hmm. And then we'll zoom in on the echidna um, and we'll see what happens. I'll just unpause the game and let it go. Um, and there'll be, a, looks like someone's already there to do it. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, tame echidna. So the only thing that you need to actually do that training is a piece of food that the animal will eat. Um, which in this case for an echidna seems to be meat. Which uh, I guess makes sense because echidnas <laughs> eat ants. I I think never. <laughs> I'm from Australia. I should know this. <laughs> um, but yeah, the layok here is hauling some dog tripe with the job uh, tame echidna. Uh huh. So we let that unpause and it looks like that's been done. They've gone back to making some potash, and this echidna is now trained. Oh right, cool. Oh wow. So, so it, you went from from wild to trained to to domesticated in one jump and uh, not domesticated but yes from wild to trained apparently Aha. Um, i was gonna say because like i i haven't done any animal training since a steam release so i don't know if anything's changed but it used yeah. to go from um from wild to semi-wild to mm-hmm. trained through to domesticated later on down the line yeah, yeah. So, um, before digging into that, because um, I've, yeah, I've, I've seen some weirdness around that myself. So right. just just as a note, that that creature n- no longer appears on the others tab. Mm-hmm. They're actually counted as a pet or livestock. Right. So, we go down to. So you can see here, for example, I've I've got a peregrine falcon, which is semi semi wild. Ah, right. Um, so I, I don't know exactly what's happening, but yeah, stray echidna trained. Still in that cage, um, but yeah, they, they they have like a training level and a training quality, um, which I think might be synonymous with with each other. Uh huh. Um, feel satisfied after receiving food. Yep, that all looks good. And we can't really see much else about them that's changed apart from that they're they're trained. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've I don't know exactly what's happening with this version either, but I've. Um, I did a bunch of, so the same process that I went through to get the Hydra, I went through a bunch on stream for getting, uh, dragons around the world. Mm. And I noticed that sometimes they would go from, from wild to Mm semi-wild or wild to straight to trained or even well-trained. Um, and that was with dwarves or, or kobolds that didn't have much in the way of animal training skill. So I don't know if there's something else at play or if there's a bug or if it's just changed. But, I know that there's yeah. a 
dice roll involved when it comes to training. And the higher the skill of your animal trainer, the higher the dice roll um, that right. they're likely to get. And there is a, a quality of applied to the training. Um, I'm just trying to remember what did I... Because I, I did learn a lot about this in the past. But again, this is all pre-steam knowledge. So I can't yeah. swear that it's still the same. Um, the quality of the training, like the equivalent of a masterwork training, mm -hmm. would mean that it would take a lot longer for an animal to revert back to semi-wild. Convert uh, compared to a fine training, which would convert back to semi wild um, much sooner. So, as that clock ticks back down towards the semi wild, um, there's a trigger then, isn't there, for the trainer to go back and retrain them? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, I haven't tracked exactly when mm -hmm. they will go back and do it, it's just uh, yeah. Um, although I have noted that sometimes that they will forget their training and revert back to their wild or semi-wild state yeah. before a trainer goes back to see them. Um, so yeah, it's something I'm hoping to learn more about, but basically I don't let anything out of its cage until it's at least <laughs> trained. Yeah. And I've noticed that it hadn't been reverting to its wild state, uh -huh. um, for quite a while. But, um, yeah, even even something that is semi-wild seems to at least be safe to leave out of its cage mm -hmm. somehow. I, again, I don't know exactly how it works. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, everything you said about quality there in terms of time to forget their training, uh -huh. mm, that sounds familiar to me. Yeah, yeah. But as you say, I, I can't say for sure whether that's still true for the um, the Steam release. Have you managed to domesticate anything yet? No, no, I haven't. Um, everything that's listed here as domesticated has been as a result of me buying them from uh -huh. elves. So the, the giant animals that I have, are, they're all domesticated, which is very interesting. <laughs> all the domesticated giant spiders that we have as well. <laughs> um, Domesticated giant tiger, domesticated giant lion, jaguars, flying squirrels, etc. Because um, any animals that you buy from the NPC traders will always be domesticated. Yeah. So they have a domestication process wherever they are. Um, for example, you can go and raid goblin dark pits uh -huh. to get um, domesticated beak dogs, which I've read about but ne never actually tried for myself. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I actually don't know the process of progressing from, uh, from trained to domesticated. I, uh, I do know there is some relation to children though. Yeah. I was going to say, I've done it with, um, uh, with breeding pairs where yeah. once you've got, if you've got a trained breeding pair, and they have offspring, then their offspring will be domesticated. Right. Uh, once they're domesticated... Oh, so you, just can't, you can't domesticate an animal that's wild. You need to domesticate their kids. I'm not 100% sure that there is definitely no way. But I've never seen it done. Um, but certainly once you've got the, um, once you've got a breeding pair and you've brought them up to, um, trained and they start having offspring, then yeah, the offspring, once they're domesticated, they, they'll never need any further training. So what I've done in the past was to, um, get the animals up to trained and then breed them and then with their offspring uh, as soon as i had the a breeding pair of offspring i'd i'd kill the originals we'd butcher the originals um and eat them um so yes did that with unicorns uh had a, <laughs> a bunch of breeding unicorns 
Yeah. So they yeah they they inherit their training or their domestication from uh -huh. their their parents as like a baseline, I believe, uh -huh. which is the, the the only way that you're. I think the the idea is that you can only overcome that wildness by um, raising the children in a domestic domestic environment. Of course, that means it, it's just occurred to me that if you capture train carnivals and then breed them so that you have domesticated offspring you can feed them their parents <laughs> i'm sorry I'm sorry you could wait what did i just miss the part where you said you could feed them their parents Oh, no, 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 you wouldn't. It's okay. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, because you don't then need to train them further as children. Yes, yeah, so you're not going to be feeding them their parents. Oh, it's okay. It's not as bad as all that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so you're Hydra. And, uh, and you're saying you've been around the world collecting dragons as well. Yeah, yeah. So how... Uh, tell us the story behind those. Well, the the motivation for that was like I, I was originally looking for a and basically an excuse to play this kobold mod, right? Which uh, the kobolds are basically little dragons, um, dragon like draconic like things. Oh yeah. So I was hoping to start a fort that would eventually be visited by a dragon that we you know capture and and have on display or whatever because I've. I'd never had a dragon visit any of the, the forts that I've made throughout any of my Dwarf Fortress gameplay. So I went looking to maximize the chances of that happening by looking up, you know, where, what are dragons? What are they in the world? Where, where do they exist? Um, so dragons are mega beasts, uh, not to be confused with semi mega beasts. Um, and it turns out in my like wiki trawling that they spawn in caves throughout the world. Uh -huh. um, and I was I was looking up how to ooh, what what a, how can I maximize my chances of embarking near a cave that would have a a dragon uh, in it so that yeah it maximizes the chances of that being a, a mega beast that actually visits our fort and steps into a trap. <laughs> um, and I stumbled across an obscure setting in world generation that actually lets you enable visibility of caves. Mm. Um, so if we jump out into the world for my fort, just center on my fort. So here's, uh, unfortunately I can't zoom in on this world view. Sure. But here, this fort is actually uh, on a cave. So it used to be a cave. Now it's a, a cobalt fortress. But we can see here where my mouse is, um, there's another cave, there's a cave there, and a cave there, and a cave there. So, if you don't mind changing world generation settings, if you want to go out into the world to find any of these mega beasts like rock, or bronze colossi, or dragons, or hydra, all you have to do is go in and turn on uh, visibility of caves at world generation to at least get an idea of where the caves themselves are throughout the world. Mm. Um, and then it just becomes a matter of figuring out which cave has which beast in it. Yeah. Which you can, I actually took a leaf from, from your book, I think, uh -huh. in that digging through legends mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all of these mega beasts, well, uh, they're significant creatures in history. You can open up before you actually embark, you can open up legends mode and look at all the um the, the the mega beasts that are still alive <laughs> um for example you might find a dragon and look at their history to see whether they where they settled which will show you the name of the cave um but it won't show you where in the world they, they are so there'll be a lot of caves in the world you have no idea where that cave is apart from mousing over each cave to see the name unfortunately mm -hmm. um you can narrow that down further by seeing if they've interacted with any 
dwarven civilizations, like maybe they became an enemy of a, of a dwarven civilization because they've been like attacked a, a settlement or something. Yeah, yeah. And then you can use the the civilization selection on the right. You know, when you're embarking, yeah. say, um, you know, here's here's a cobalt civilization that that I've embarked near because this hydra became an enemy of them, and then it was a matter of just looking at all the caves nearby to see. Uh, where that particular cave was, and then uh, clicking embark. Uh-huh. Um, and it, yeah, it does take a bit of manual process. Hopefully, we'll get that that capability of exporting world information mm-hmm. uh, back, because before the Steam release, you could export like XML data mm-hmm. of the world. Um, yeah, legends export, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, you could find the cave just like that. But at the moment, it's possible. It just takes a bit of manual. Uh, clicking around nav- and navigating. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I go back into the world here, zoom out and I pull back up, we can actually see to the to the east of my embark, like center embark, mm-hmm. this formation here is actually the cave, the ah. Hydra's cave. Um, and I've walled it off <laughs> because it, it does have a direct line, like, well, secure, circuitous route down into the caverns below they would have an access through there so just to prevent any um kobolds wandering down or creatures wandering back up mm-hmm. um yeah i just walled it off with a, a wooden wall <laughs> which is completely impervious to anything of course because it's a wall, regardless of being wood um but yeah the the thing to be aware of though is like even though they live in their caves in terms of the world, where they spawn on the map when you embark could be up on the, they could be up on the surface. Yeah. <laughs> Which we actually had here. The, the Hydra, when we spawned into this world, was around about here. Oh, dear. So, thankfully, our cavern was, our, our wagon was down here out of the way, just. Um, but we were able to set up like a, a line of cage traps and bait the, the Hydra basically with live bait, like a kobold, <laughs> um, over the cage traps. And yeah, just like any other creature, the Hydra wandered onto the cage trap and became uh, trapped. And then we hauled it downstairs, gave it a bit of meat, and it became trained. Wow. <laughs> just like any <laughs> other creature. <clears throat> um, Did you embark with cages already made or anything like that to make sure that you were ready to go at the time uh no i actually don't remember if cages are something you can bring with you um no i I just tend to make that stuff on site like if i'm embarking somewhere with trees i'll just (coughs) cut down trees when i get there yeah um because at the very least you have to make mechanisms anyway because you can't bring mechanisms with you Mm. um so you're gonna have to make a little bit of a production anyway to make some mechanisms to actually power the cage traps. So I, I tend to bring raw stone and maybe some logs with me to make this initial like room and then dig down and just make a, a few initial workshops and then build the cages and mechanisms and some food production and stuff like that and then get going. Mm. Uh, Roma Voxtrot. Uh, who is part of the DF Hack team in chat says you have to use DF Hack to do it at the moment. That is exporting the XML file. It's a fairly straightforward process within the console, or you could ask us nicely to write a script. Oh, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. I, I, I think there'd be a lot of people. This is a good format for it. Yes, please. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. Um, I I don't remember where I read this, but I remember reading someone saying that all the functionality for the XML export is still there. It's just that that basically the the interface for it is not. So I, yeah, my understanding is that it's going to come back. It's Ah. just that it wasn't on their priority. Yeah, Room says, um, no, we can't export XML yet, uh, but we could find this specific site by name. And some of it is still there. Some of it isn't. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, finding a specific site by name would be actually really useful because you 
go out into the world and maybe type search for a specific site that you're looking for mm. uh, for more than just caves. Indeed. But you might be looking to embark next to a certain historical figure or something like that. I, I'm not sure. That would be quite yeah. useful. Mm. So I've got a fortress where I've got huge quantities of uh, wild animals in cages mm. and i thought we might uh, pop over to uh, my fortress once uh, you finished uh, showing us what you've been doing with training and see what we can do about training up some animals from scratch with no training experience and have a look at how that goes um, yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, just want to see, is there anything else that, anything that you've like to cover further? Not that I can think of, because I haven't done anything with the, like, like for one thing of note, with this Hydra, you can't further train it with uh, war or hunting skills. Like, I could actually elect for this giant lion to be trained further as a, as a war giant lion yeah. <laughs> or a, a hunter giant lion um the hydra does not have those options although when i was capturing dragons they did yeah um which was an interesting interesting prospect to maybe have a, a hunting dragon <laughs> um but yeah so th this has not been the focus of this particular fort so i haven't done anything with mm -hmm. the the war or hunting so maybe if you want to i can show that like, delve yeah. into that on your end yeah yeah um uh, just a note about training dragons for war. Um, we were talking about this with somebody in one of the previous streams. Uh, there is a problem with dragons when you train them for war. And that is, wherever they are in your fortress, if your military becomes involved in combat, <laughs> the dragon will start shooting fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, oh, I'm sure that wouldn't have any reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, almost anything can be melted by dragon fire. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's even more encouraging. Um, yeah. So act active military and mega beasts, even if they're tamed, as far as I understand, will still be hostile towards each other. Yeah. They're, um, it's. Mega beasts and war training probably don't mix well. Yeah. Um, it's something that I'll be experiencing later on with this particular fort. Um, <laughs> yeah, because at the moment I've got... That's, that's one of the reasons why I have the Hydra sitting in its, room, its own room mm -hmm. down here, just to keep it visually isolated at least, so it doesn't um, come into as much visual contact with anyone as possible. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, specifically the dragons with their dragon fl dragon fire. Um, yeah, even magma safe material is not safe from dragon fire, which is an I, I won't spoil how it's done, but is an interesting challenge for anyone looking to go out and like that process that I described of going out to their home to trap them. Mm -hmm. um, comes with some interesting challenges in terms of getting the dragon to become trapped when. Mm it's not actively pathing into your fort. So you actually have to bait it. Um, and when you I add would, dragon fire into that mix, I would it's, love a, it's an interesting to challenge. Know. I would love to know how you did it. All right, okay. I mean, I can go into that if you want. But... Yeah, if you <laughs> if you don't mind revealing your secrets. Sure thing, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this is the definition of a spoiler stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there's... As with anything in Dwarf Fortress, right, there's going to be a bunch of ways that you could approach things. Uh -huh. The the approach that I took is actually visible here. Um, if I so this is a ground floor, and I push down one one floor, you can actually see I've dug out a trench here. Mm -hmm. Now imagine that the thing that you want to capture, the dragon in this case, is sitting up here somewhere, like um, around here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to say out of its line of sight, like for the dra the dragon will be idling here, basically, it'll be like moving around, like in its idle routine. So, 
there's no way for it to actually path into your fort because it just doesn't want to, right? Yeah. Um, so you actually have to bring something close to it to um, activate it and make it hostile. The the problem is, like, let's say if you just built a few traps down here at the bottom of my screen around here, and then you tried to get the dragon to walk along to it uh -huh. using some sort of live bait, like a kobold or a dragon or, or a dwarf or whatever, most likely what's going to happen is the dragon will chase down that thing that it's after and then breathe fire most of the way across the screen. Yeah. Destroying the traps in the process. Um, no matter what they're built from, magma safe material, netherworld <coughs> cages, doesn't matter. They're all just going to melt. Um, so the, the trick that I eventually came up with was to have a cage like a trench, uh -huh. which is one Z level down, and then bait the dragon to run across it. So initially it would start around here and get aggravated and breathe fire like in a big cone above it at whatever it's trying to chase down. But that fire would not go down into the trench. But to keep chasing the thing that it's after, the dragon would have to run through the trench and path over the traps to come back up here and it would get trapped uh -huh. all the time. So it's a matter of keeping those traps safe from the dragon fire spray in like a re reliable manner. And that is one way that, that, that I did it. Um, that also allows for maintaining line of sight on the thing that it's trying to chase down. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've um, I've caught dragons in traps before, but I've had to sacrifice rather a lot of dogs, drawbridges <laughs> and traps before catching it. Yeah. Um, the way that I managed to catch it was corridors with corners. <laughs> right, yep, yep. That was uh, my first attempt as well. Yeah, yeah, chicanes um, with lots of traps in it and getting the dragons to chase dogs down the corridors. Yeah, yeah. On the ground that um, if the... there was enough corners, eventually the dog would yes. get far ahead enough of the dragon that the dragon would turn a corner uh, and get caught in a trap that it hadn't already, that melted. it hadn't previously melted, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and of course you, you realise with that approach it's all down to randomness. Yeah, um, yeah, I love you know, this they... trench method. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the very first approach that I took was un, I, the dragon happened to have spawned down in a cavern, actually, so we had to do things below ground as well. Right. Um, but it ended up just being one very, very long corridor. <laughs> <laughs> I just filled it with traps and just a long, straight corridor because the trick is to maintain that line of sight as mm. much as you can, otherwise the dragon will just stop and then revert back to where wherever it came from. Mm. Um, assuming that you've actually visited the creature on its home, that is, like yeah. the, the Mega Beast has not um, attacked your fort. Because if it's just, if it's attacking your fort, it's very easy yeah. compared to this because they just want to path in. So the the method that you've used here, this was to catch the Hydra, was it? Yes. Uh, so did you need to use the trench method for the Hydra? Probably not, but I found it to be the easiest um, yeah, yeah. To, to do reliably. Because um, it allows you to build the traps rather close to the creature. Because uh, that line of sight break from that one Z level down. Aha. Uh -huh. So uh, we can see, like, I've, I've got, like, a tunnel underneath here. So the first thing is to actually dig underneath, like, one level down. Yeah. Um, and put the, tr the cages in place and then use um, dig ramp up. Uh-huh. Like, like that. Yeah. Which is basically the opposite direction of channeling. That's so. That's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> so the the dwarves or kobolds in this case mm -hmm. would stay on that Z level down, mm. digging ramps up, breaking out the floor above, 
Mm -hmm. and would result in in this sort of look here mm. um so and then it's just a matter of of um baiting so you could even then just bring one of the the live bait and whatever you want to use or your your, your dwarves or your dogs or whatever uh -huh. and somehow putting them there and yeah. they will flee yeah they'll panic and flee and usually in the direction away like to the south in this case and the the mega beast or dragon hydra whatever will chase and just path down and, and run into one of those cages and get caught mm-hmm Like of course, that's, if you're doing this, clever, yeah. um, I recommend uh, doing it early on. <laughs> I got a bit complacent in this particular fort, and one of the reasons why we had a bad start is because I, I let a couple of migrant waves come in um, oh. <laughs> before I captured the surface-dwelling Hydra. <laughs> um, and one of those migrant waves happened to, to um, spawn on the map with the Hydra in between their spawn point and my, my wagon. Oh dear. <laughs> and yeah, we lost a few of them because <laughs> it, they, they just passed from like, uh, up here somewhere. Like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like oh, a Hydra. And, uh, yeah, the Hydra got maybe three or four of them. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and then I was like, oh yeah, I better capture that thing. <laughs> Um, and a note on uh, mega beasts and if you specifically want lots of mega beasts in your world then to increase the number of mega beasts that are still around um, a very short history uh, helps so yes yeah so you started, um, you've got, you're on year 102 at the moment. Uh, yeah. So you ran a hundred year history. Thereabouts. I think I stopped it at like 95 or 96 right. or something just, just because. Um, but yeah, it seems like as you progress through years 100 to 200, the mega beasts seem to die off very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I even found that, yeah, year 200, year 250, as I was looking through Legends mode, most of the Mega Beasts were dead. Right. Um, so if you're after Mega Beasts specifically, yeah, stop your world generation earlier. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I did was I went into the world generation and I swapped around the two settings for Mega Beast caves and semi Mega Beast caves. Ah. Because there were there were more semi Mega Beast caves than Mega Beast caves. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that had a great effect or not. Um, but yeah, it was basically like, I think it was like 75 Mega Beast Caves versus 150 Semi. Mm -hmm. So I just swapped those two numbers around. Um, yes, yeah, so yeah. less less Giants, more more Hydras. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. All right, shall we switch over to my fortress and do some training? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I'll just... Oop, not disconnect. Hang on. <laughs> Let's just minimize you. There we go. <laughs> right. So this is my tiny tower fortress. I'll just zoom out and give a bit of a fortress tour so people can see what we're looking at. Uh, it's a one by one embark. So nice. we, yeah. <laughs> um, this is really good for wild animals because you get the same amount of wild animals on a one by one embark as you would on a four by four embark. <laughs> but of course, they're all very close to your fortress. Yeah. Um, it is, it has its own challenges doing a one by one embark. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I love doing one by one embarks. But of course, as soon as you're raided, um, or you get a mega beast or something or a weird beast appear on your map it's it's on top of you <laughs> the moment it's there it's it's on top of you you don't get any warning and it's it's as likely as not that if you've got a dwarf that is in any of the diagonal coordinates then there's a high likelihood that whatever the threat is that's just entered the map it could be closer to your fortress 
than your dwarves are. So getting your dwarves back to safety can be uh, a little bit tricky. So, uh, yes, we've got our tiny tower fortress here. I've been building up the levels. So we do have uh, a bit of walling going on. Uh, we've been building copper walls. And, uh, and I've got the surface locked down. I'm not sure why. I can't remember why I locked all of the doors here. There must have been a reason. Um, we've got a caravan at the moment. The dwarven caravan's here. Uh, that that might come in useful uh, for the training. Yeah, we've got weird beasts. That's fine. Uh, I think I completed the training, uh, the trading. Right. So the way into the fortress is actually down the ramps here. And I've got ramps that spiral down past some war dogs. Um, we'll look at um, war dog training. Am I... Oh, okay. I'm not completely locked down. I've got an entrance way coming down here. Um, that drawbridge is lowered. That drawbridge is raised raised and raised okay so i've got one entrance open at the moment so underground at the top of the fortress i've got um some farms underneath that is a food stockpile uh and my kitchens and stills and fishery in the middle of the food stockpile uh, this is a crusher drawbridge that deals with the rubbish if we throw rubbish down from the surface this is where we crush it and because my fortress has been open on the surface for a long time, I've been using the U-Bend design to keep the fortress safe on the surface because things cannot destroy stuff that's above their head. So if we go down another level, oops, um, to get into the fortress, things have got to come down these stairs here past my dogs so the dogs are keeping an eye out for thieves and then up this staircase here where I've got some hatch covers so if I lock yeah. those hatch covers nothing can get into the fortress um, even a dragon a dragon couldn't burn those hatch covers because it's above its head and they can't fire they can't they can't spread fire upwards Quick question about that. Yeah. I know that's been a thing that, that I've heard lately. Is that like a new thing to the Steam version? Or has that been around for a long time? It's been around for a long time. So um, you think that's not something that he's not going to patch out anytime soon? Or? No. Uh, it's Really? Interesting. Yeah, the U-Bend design has been functional for... Ooh, I've been using it for five or six years. Um, I just started playing with it and then realized yeah uh, it this is it's my own design the u-bend design uh so i don't know how how common it is out there i use it everywhere for everything now um i was definitely curious because i know that they're like going to immediately patch out the forgotten beast being able to knock down yeah, doors yeah because that's that's um building destroyer is a thing and has always been, or has been a thing for a long time. And it's only with the Steam release that some building destroyers have forgotten that they can do that. Um, worth noting that I had a weir beast in this room. And the weir beast destroyed both doors. So certainly weir beasts eventually will destroy doors. The oh. weir beast was in this room for a long time. So, yeah, I've had some um, undead experiments try to knock down doors as well right. and get them to a damaged state before I um, managed to get to them from the other side. Mm. Yeah. Um, put a wall behind a door and you're safe. Um, hatch covers over the top of stairs and grates as well, floor grates, if you're not looking to pass through them uh, frequently, then floor grates also work. 
so yeah, here we have a farmer's guild, my dining room. And yes, my, my weird beast management room. Going down further. And this is my trade depot. So for traders to reach us, they go down the spiral. Um, past the crusher ramps, you can see the, the remnants of our last goblin raid there. Um, and the the ramp spiral down for a few levels and then spiral back up again um, before coming in here and this is just um this is my dog storage room it's where i keep my female dogs i've been keeping my males and females because i've got so many dogs now i've been keep i've just started to separate the males and females uh to reduce the amount of pups that we're getting in the fortress Uh, going down a bit further, um, this is my my farm animal room. Um, these are animals that are not grazers. So I've got uh, my pigs. We're working our way through the pigs at the moment. I don't. I'm not planning on keeping pigs any longer. And I used to have breeding sets of peacocks as well. So the pigs I'm swapping over for lions and the um, the peafowl I'm swapping over for cassowary. So I bought a breeding pair of cassowary off the elves and a breeding pair of lions from the elves. So it's like, well, why are we keeping pigs when I've got lions? Did, did, are you you're breeding lions for food? Yeah. Okay, just, <laughs> just confirming that. <laughs> So you're having a lion milk? <laughs> um, it's actually, do you know, I don't know if we can milk lions. I want to see the dwarf try. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we can certainly turn them into a good stew. <laughs> um, then going down a bit further. I've got my hospital, hospital and weird beast quarantine area, where my two dwarfs that are infected with weird beastism are trapped in their hospital rooms. One day I'll do something with those two. But because they are members of our fortress, they will never walk into a cage trap. So I can't catch these in a cage trap. Whereas, as we mentioned earlier, with a weird beast, weird beasts are trap avoid. They won't walk into a cage trap. But if you wait for them to turn back into their original form, as long as they don't belong, as long as they're not part of your fortress, um, then yeah, they'll walk through the cage trap. Then they'll get ca they'll get caught by the cage trap. Uh, soap making. Oops. Um, bedrooms here. I'm slowly putting down silver walls as we get more silver. Uh, to get in and out of the bedrooms, we've got stairs up and down to the next level where I'm keeping my spare cats. And down a level from here is where I'm put, starting to put down some more bedrooms. Um, then down again. This is my cemetery where I, uh, everybody who died got a statue explaining what happened to them. Aban Chalcis withered away. Okay, so they just died of old age. Some of them had more adventurous endings. Oh yeah, that was a baby that fell. Uh, as you can see around here, the, this light blue area indicates that there is a uh, a lot of open space down there. Yeah, um, I was going to ask, is this is, is all that open space something that you've dug out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nice. I'm carving, a, carving the tower, an underground tower, mm -hmm. um, out of the rock. Uh, this is my clothes making area and some offices in the corner. Um, this is where I keep my male dogs. So what I do with my male dogs is I um, I castrate them and then train them up as war dogs. Uh, we'll look at that in a little bit. 
and I've learnt to the, um, well, yeah, to the trauma of some of my dwarfs that it is better if you're going to castrate <laughs> your war dogs, castrate them before you train them for war rather than after. That way the gelder doesn't suffer as much. <laughs> Uh, never even thought of that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so the dwarf that does it survives. Okay. Uh, this floor here is my sort of common room areas. I've got a library, a temple, um, a guild hall. That's a weaponsmith's guild hall. Uh, my barracks and a tavern. One day these these rooms they'll they'll get all fancy rooms for everything. Uh, for the moment, they're just sort of patches on the ground. Um, I've got a dormitory for all of the dwarfs that don't have a room, and this is where I'm keeping the animals that I got from the elves. You're keeping the lions in the <laughs> dormitory for the for the guys that don't got a room yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, this don't let the bed bugs bite. That's not a bed bug. That's a bed's a, that's a big bug. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm still getting over this cold. <laughs> yeah, making uh, you laugh isn't helping, I'm sure. But <laughs> you, you, you got your beds guarded by lions. I need to, I need to address Indeed. that. <laughs> Yeah, so down here we've got some, we've started breeding up um, some lions now. We've got some baby lion cubs there, some male lion cubs. Um, have we got any females yet? Oh yeah, I've got a female lion cub as well. Excellent, so the next generation of lions are on their way. I've also got a um, female tiger. So we've got a jaguar, a cheetah, cougars. Uh, there's another tiger there. Oh, a male tiger. Okay. So it could be that we also add breeding tigers into our breeding lions. Um, I've also got a dingo. I'm not sure. I don't think I can tra war train the dingoes. Um, I've got some alligators. Yeah, got some male alligators. If I get a female alligator, I might start... Uh, breeding alligators as well just just because well with a, a giant trench it feels like alligators down the bottom of the trench would be appropriate mm -hmm. uh, so there so these are the animals that I've been buying from the elves uh, of course they're already trained and domesticated uh, and they're yeah they they behave they might as well be pigs or dogs or something like that they're just as well behaved they stay in a pasture they don't need further training um i'll have a we'll look at war training some of these guys in a moment and this is my animal stockpile i've got all kinds of things in here uh, barn owls elk birds honey badgers uh water buffaloes there's um wild boars <clears throat> capybaras those um yeah pretty much anything that's wandered on the map at some point has mm. just walked into a cage trap i put some cage traps around the entrance to the fortress uh the surface entrance uh and it's only in a small space on the surface but oh my gosh we caught so much yeah. uh, and then we bought we caught a load of elk birds down in the uh the cavern one of the caverns uh, so down here, oops, wrong way. Uh, Sal, mm. quick question. With your trading with the elves, have you noticed if they've been bringing any giant animals or not? Not on this map. I haven't had any giant animals from this uh, this okay. map. I presume that the elves that I'm training with don't have access to the giant versions. Yeah, um, yeah so I'm wondering why mine seem specifically to have a lot of giant animals and i'm guessing it's because maybe their retreats are in savage biomes or something yeah, like that probably another fortress that uh, the other fortress that i've been showing on the kitfox streams um 
the elves have been bringing lots of giant animals uh, from mm. there. But yes, I'm guessing the elves that visit us here are in a non-savage biome. Yep. Um, something that I came across, and this yeah. might be relevant now if we're mm -hmm. talking about trading, is where, so one of the things I was trying to do with the, the whole dragon capturing thing was to try and collect them from multiple places in the world and actually gather them back into one fort. But I ran into a bunch of issues with that and eventually a, a game crash bug prevented me from uh, going any further. But while doing that, I found that if you send like even a single dwarf out to uh, on a mission yeah. um, to another fort, to, to another like site anywhere uh -huh. and demand that they surrender, <laughs> <laughs> just like sending one person out and say, <laughs> hey, surrender. Um, of course, they'll say no and send send them back. But it one, it doesn't cause a war, uh -huh. but it does establish uh, contact. Mm. And they can then start, they will then start sending trade caravans your way. <laughs> so um, I haven't done it on this world that I'm in at the moment, but I'm thinking about looking for other sites that are in savage biomes and send, doing that and establishing contact with them and getting them, seeing what arrives in the form of trade caravans, like in terms of animals. Mm, yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Mm. Like maybe if you, oh, it'd be difficult to find out which biome there. Do you know what biomes are around you? No, I imagine that you'd have to somehow get back to the embark screen. Yeah, 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 to to find out what the yeah where the savage biomes are. Yep. Mm hmm. Um, so yes, this floor here is my workshop floor because all of the rock that we've been digging out from above, I've just been throwing over the edge. So there's um, rather than haul it anywhere, I just threw it over the edge of the tower as we were digging down and uh, it's all landed on this level. So I'm um, using minecarts and uh, quantum stockpiles to gather it in, and I've got all of my stone working stuff down here. Uh, once I've cleared it all in from the edge, then we'll be digging down to the next level. And I'm kind of hoping that I might take this fortress all the way down to the magma take take the tower down to the magma i think that'd be cool <laughs> mm -hmm. uh going down further uh ambitious. so this is sorry pack rat ambitious well yeah <laughs> <coughs> um down here is so this is the switchback where i uh where the traders finish coming down the spiral and start going back up the next spiral and down here i've got um this is a bait dog that i use if i if i want to run my crus crusher traps because we've got goblins on the surface or something else if there's something on the surface that's hostile that i want to draw into the fortress I just put these crusher traps on repeat, uh, but I close this drawbridge so that my dwarfs don't wander out into the uh, into the entranceway. But that means I need to attract the hostiles down. So I have this bait dog at the end here, um, trained for war so he can look after himself, but they shouldn't make it down here. Something did make it down here, but I think it was a thief. Um, there was a couple of thieves that came in at the same time as a goblin army and they managed to make it down as far as these uh, cave uh, cage traps here uh, cage traps sorry weapon traps I've got artifact weapons in these uh, traps here and whips whips are amazing in weapon traps because they've got a bit of an area of effect mm and uh these are the levers that control these various doors here my there's one for the dog uh just in case i need to secure the dog one to control the switchback 
and one to control the crusher doors. Uh, going down further, so once we get down below this level, um, I'm kind of at the limit of the development of the fortress. Um, there is this is where the first level of cavern uh, opened up, and within this, oh yeah, uh, this is where I'm keeping my alpacas and where I'm shearing them. So I've got a, a workshop that's doing shearing there. And then, as we went down underneath the cavern, uh, yeah, we've got a road. A road that runs through the fortress. I so, want to come back to those alpacas in a minute. Sure. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, there's... Um, if you find dwarven civilizations that are separated by mountain ranges you often get roads that run through the caverns and mm -hmm. this one i really really liked because the road doesn't like runs underneath the cavern rather than through the cavern uh, if we go down further uh this is my dungeon we've only had one person locked up in the dungeon so far so that's the the room for the uh captain of the guard and yeah somebody got imprisoned for uh failing to produce a thing that the mayor wanted mm -hmm. so we set them up with a, a nice room there going down further uh we've got oops what was that i think that was just somewhere i uh, just dug out some rock there uh second cavern layer uh this is where i had the cage traps really don't need those cage traps anymore uh, cage traps where I was catching I was actually trying to catch a giant cave spider that killed one of my people uh, but I ended up catching a whole load of elk birds instead but the <laughs> caverns are all fully walled in now so uh, our dwarves are safe and this is where I'm doing my sand collecting going down further uh, we get to cavern layer 3 which is very stinky we tend to get lots of forgotten beast fights in this corner and the current forgotten beast is um geneda spad Egnugunzan, the forgotten beast <laughs> uh yeah that's the one that i forget what it is about this one that's so tough He's lost one of his tails. Oh, he's a yeah, web composed spitter. Composed of granite mm. and webs. Yeah, a granite made web spitter. Yeah, um, he's a tough guy. Uh, he took out our previous most tough guy, which um, was made out of talc. But he, I mean, the talc, a talc poison spitter, uh, did a number on the granite web spitter. But yeah, that's uh, actually found that it helps with frame rate to keep a forgotten beast in your caverns because they kill all of the creatures that wander down here. <laughs> so you don't have as many things on your map. Um, oh, and down here in the depths of Cavern 2 is where I keep my, uh, my non-gelded male dogs. These are my stud dogs, so my puppy daddies. Um, oh, and a pet male dog as well. Uh, so if I need to breed more pups, I've got some dogs safely tucked away a long, long way away from the other females. And then a bit further down from here, we hit the magma. Ooh, there we go. So here's my furnaces, glass furnaces, um... I'm just building another another forge at the moment. And underneath here is a pool of magma, a reservoir of magma that uh, I got the dwarfs to just pump that from the sea below. So the the shape of the sea just didn't loan itself to me opening up to it. So yeah, yeah. I just pumped a, a room full. Uh, so that's my fortress. Very nice. Yeah, I might have to try it one by one at some point. 
Um, <laughs> I feel like some point. some things with the caverns are a bit more manageable um, in a one by one or a smaller fort at least. Mm. Otherwise, they just they sprawl out so far, and it's, it's so difficult to keep like a a mental model of the layout of the caverns because it's all over various Z, Z levels. Indeed. Uh, so things in cages. Here I've got a goblin, a dwarf, and another dwarf. Uh, these are enemy dwarfs. Mm. Uh, it's a bow dwarf. It's got a goblin name. That's a marks dwarf. It's got a goblin name. So these were three enemies that we caught in the cage traps. Wasn't trying to. They just ended up in them. And with those guys, what I'm doing is I've got I've installed the cages outside the walls and it's linked to a lever. So if I get something on the surface that's going to cause me a problem, <laughs> um, I can turn four problems into one problem by mm. releasing these three. And so that's part of my philosophy of how to deal with the enemies in Dwarf Fortress, is to reduce the number of problems that I have, especially when it comes to things like Titans and stuff. Um, if you've got two Titans, it's quite easy to turn that into one Titan, as long as you've got the right setup of traps or corridors or something. Uh, so yeah, these three here, I'm just leaving them outside until I need to do something <laughs> if there's um, until i I've, I've got a problem that i need to deal with and yeah that'll turn four problems into one problem so this is where the animals have been caught because usually i've got the doors open here and the wild animals just walk through and a bunch of them just keep on walking across the the cage traps so that's how come i've ended up with so many of them this inner wall here, I put this in just to try and keep the honey badgers away from my butcher. Because it kept the honey badgers kept scaring my butcher. Mm. Uh, so let's go train some animals. So first thing, I've got some pups here. Um, and you're male. Okay. Right, let's do some some animal management first then. Show me my my pups. One of the dogs at the bottom of the caverns must have made his way up. Right, yep, got some stray pups and I I want to geld those so that I don't end up with even more pups. Actually, I wonder if I intended to keep them because my puppy daddy might be getting a bit old. Oh, I think we're good. I'll just buy another male dog if I run out of male dogs. Uh, so, my puppy daddy, I haven't bothered training that one. Um, we can't train, we can't war train the other pups uh, until they're adults. But once they're adults, I'll get them trained up as war dogs. So let's have a look at what we can train up as uh, war animals. So our tigers, yeah, male and female tigers, we can train them for war. War tigers sound very effective. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> what else can we train up for war? Yeah, I need to cool some animals. So yes, we can train up our lions for war. I've got a leopard and a jaguar I can train for war. I don't bother training up the females. 
uh, the female dogs. So the male dogs I keep in specific locations, train them up for war because it helps them survive the dangerous situations that they're in. But because the pups tend to hang around with the females, I don't put the females up near the surface or um, somewhere where I don't want... Because the pups have a tendency to leave the zones, the pasture zones. So I don't want my dwarfs constantly running out to go and pasture the pups. Um, keeping the female dogs inside the fortress is... Um, a lot more a lot less labor than dealing with them on the surface um the cougar and the dingo yeah they can't be war trained so let's just eat them but the cheetah can so the cheetah the lions and the uh the tigers will train for war just because we can Oh, and the hmm. bobcat. Okay, so now we know what we can train for war. Let's go down to the lion room. Otherwise known as the dormitory. So to train these guys up, what we're going to need is um, an animal training zone. And I like to put an animal training zone on top of where the animals are. So we've got a pen pasture here that's got all of the animals in. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anybody. Because I've got so many wild animals in cages. I might have missed bringing somebody down here. See, they're all elk birds. A gorlack. Uh, wild capybaras, honey badgers, wild boars. A barn owl. Water buffalo, capybaras, honey badger. Wild boars and honey badgers. Uh, water buffalo, owls. Wild boars, water buffaloes. bunch of cassowaries that are not in a, a pasture zone. Then I've got the three enemies. Oh yeah, and an etin in a cage somewhere. Hmm. More barn owls. Okay, so everybody who's supposed to be down here is... Right, let's set up... Um, an animal training zoo and we'll paste that over the top of the animal pasture and so to train these guys for war really easy go to pets and livestock and let's look through and see who can be trained easier to do it by name so that they're all grouped by species Sure, we'll train the bobcat. Yeah, something I don't understand, at least with this release, is why the animal training zone is necessary. Mm. It feels like it might be a, a vestige of the previous releases where there used to be a like a, a training building, I think, that you would make. Um, there used to be a vermin training building. But... You used to put down an animal pasture and say whether it was an animal training zone as well or not. Hmm. But yeah, they, the two zones have been separated out. Yeah. Oh, 
Let's train the tigers. Okay, that'll do. Right, and somebody will come down now and train these guys. Yep, training stray lion for war. Training the stray lion for war. You're training the cheetah. Training a tiger. So, yep, yeah, that's... Um, ah, we've now learnt a few facts about lion taming. <laughs> so how how much you your fortress knows about um taming creatures uh and training creatures that information will be taken back to the homeland um every time the caravan leaves and i believe it takes it was something like 80 years um, of caravans traveling back to the mountain homes to transfer the knowledge from you and your training to the mountain home mm. to get to the point where your home civilization in the future could have that animal available as a domesticated animal that you could embark with so if we if we carried on training animals and we ran this fortress for 80 something years then there's a chance that if we were to embark in this world with the same civilization and a new fortress we'd be able to take lions with us and war lions and things oh yeah, apparently my uh my kobolds know a few facts about training hydras <laughs> uh, right let's put an animal training zone over the stockpile okay and uh, I'm going to do as you did before now I'm going to add a new work detail and I'm going to put animal training as a separate Uh, skill so that we can start training some people up there we go we'll say only selected and I think anyone who's got a planter skill is probably the kind of person actually have I got nature lovers I do okay anyone who's in category one can be an animal trainer they'll probably like it it's only a few of them all right i'll throw a few more people in if i've put them down as planters it's probably the kind of thing they'd enjoy doing then um and anybody who's doing animal gathering we've got a lot of animals to train that'll do then do i need to switch off anything else no that good right so now to train these guys oops right so we need to assign a trainer Hmm. I'm still being offered to everybody. Mm. I think that's what I was looking for. I thought somewhere. I thought I had a work detail that had all of the things in. It was part of this nature lover thing. 
Ah, that's right. Yeah, everybody does this. Um, let's just... Yeah, animal training is showing up there. Yeah, there we go. Right, let's untick that from there. This is about controlling who can butcher and who can chop down trees because I've got a few nature lovers in the fortress. Right. That'll sort that out. So now if we go others. There we are. Right, so any trainer can train you. So am I right in, because I haven't done this for a while, is this how we go about it, Gwilym? Yes, like unless you specifically want one person to train one particular animal, that's the way I've done it. Yeah, I think we've got so many things to train. Mm -hmm. Can't train the Gorlack, unfortunately, because uh, no. <laughs> the Gorlack is a an intelligent creature. Yeah. Yeah, I've had Gorlack diplomats. Yeah, I'd really like to release the Gorlack. I'm just not sure... I'm sure he'd like to be released, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just not sure how he would behave around the fortress, whether, whether he'd attack anyone or scare anyone. Yeah, I had a pretty sad story of a, a Gorlack diplomat. Um, managed to get caught in our traps um, in a previous fort. Um, oh dear. During a, a siege. So the, the sieging enemies weren't attacking the, the Gorlack, but they must have been on the same tile yeah. when a stonefall trap triggered. Oh dear. And the, the Gorlack got severely injured, like injured spine. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So they lost their ability to walk. Um, and I, I tried to, um, put them in the hospital zone to see if there was any chance that they would get healed up by our, um, by our dwarves. Yeah. If I'd set that to, you know, allow visitors, but yeah. it didn't seem to want to. So, uh, this Gorlack diplomat spent, must have been two or three seasons crawling off the map because they were trying to leave. Oh, no. Right? <laughs> um, and they eventually made it off the map. I was like, okay, fine. And then uh, very, very shortly after, they passed back onto the map to visit again. Oh, no. <laughs> they, had, they, they were healed up of their, like, immediate, like, bleeding injuries and all that, but all their long-lasting injuries, such as the, the spinal injuries, remained... So they, they just crawling slowly back into the fort to be a visitor. <laughs> it's really, uh, it's like, what was it like, can, can we at least give this Gorlack like crutches so they can yeah. become a, a crutch walker? <laughs> but no, they just slowly, slowly move around the fort being a diplomat. I've still got a head treasurer in my fort somewhere, for some reason. Hmm. I don't have anywhere for visitors to hang out, so I'm not quite sure why he's still here. Hmm. Right, there are the animals I didn't bother buying. And they're just the creatures down in the, in the caverns. You see, the cavern creatures uh, tend to be quite have small numbers of cavern creatures because I think we've got a forgotten beast on every level. Mm. Okay, so now we should get somebody come down and start training these guys up. Yeah, so you'll either need meat mm -hmm. for the meat eaters or plants. Otherwise, I suppose. Yeah, we've got plenty of everything. Plenty of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. and not that far away either, because it's just at the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's what they're doing now. So 
So, Pack, you had a question about all of my llamas. It was less about the llamas and more about um, the the uh, feeding of the animals. If you encounter, I, I, like, I had a bunch of cows that I was trying to, to move into the base and um, trying to feed them with the moss. Mm -hmm. But my first level doesn't have any moss. Ah. And it seemed that the moss from the other two levels was not enough to feed the the um, the cows. Is the do you know if there's like any differences between the mosses where like one is grows faster than the other, or, or is there any anything else that's for uh, feeding them like that? Or... And so Just a general question along that line. Yeah. So and underground. Me, we got, not only do I have Hun in the background and Midlip, but I also have construction going on downstairs. Oh dear. Shooting <laughs> a lot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, underground grazing. That was one of the things that I wanted to cover today. There's three ways to get underground grazing. The first is to um find an area of natural soil sand clay loam or peat or any combination of those words and crack open the caverns the caverns you can as long as you've cracked them open and the caverns already have some form of moss in them you can then seal them back up straight away and that's it the spores are in the world and also once you've cracked open the cavern in a fortress in the world if you then go and set up a new fortress in the world somewhere else you'll still have uh, the moss will immediately grow in your new fortress as well so it mm. that translates across multiple fortresses uh, so yeah that's the first first way to get the um I thought that they had to be like uh, the map had to connect to the previous fortress in some way for that to work. Oh. Well, the caverns tend to be connected everywhere anyway. And the surface is connected everywhere anyway. I don't know whether, like, if you change your civilization or anything like that, I don't know whether or not that would alter anything i've no idea about that but um yeah i don't know of any conditions just that if you've if you set up a second fortress you'll get moss growing if you've already cracked the caverns on your first fortress but you've had to have had moss spread in your first fortress for the moss to spread in your second fortress. Um, I don't know if... Ah, there we go. Bookprints in chat says, changing sieves stopped it uh, for them. Aha. Uh, second way is to take some a bare rock floor and get some water on the bare rock floor and then the mussels spread onto the bare rock um because you'll muddy the floor and any muddied floors uh, you'll get moss growing up and that uh, brings up the question does that grow moss better than just like dirt or anything else like that no it seems to be that the moss quantities i haven't noticed any difference um so so when you have moss in the caverns there's i guess one thing that, oops hang on sorry i've got a diplomat uh i'll just have a look at the diplomat in a second so the it depends on how much of the cavern floor the moss can spread on that's kind of important um like this this entire cavern floor here is all sand so there's a huge amount of moss Sometimes you'll get cavern floors that are part sand, part rock, and patchy. Um, you can see this area here is supporting a huge amount of, uh, of animals. And there's still loads and loads of moss. And it's not because it's on sand 
um, or there's anything special about that sand. It's just because it's all sand. Um, so the zone that I've got the llamas in, uh, you can see they're leaking out. I've got so many of them here, they're overcrowded and they're going for a walk. Um, but yeah, I've just got a, a large surface area um, that's available for them to graze on. And different animals require a different amount of food. Like this would not support the same number of elephants, for example. Um, if I was keeping this number of elephants, I would probably need multiple cavern floors to do that across. Um, but yeah, the, the different colours of moss doesn't seem to matter. The different cavern layers don't seem to matter. Uh, you do get some barren caverns though. I think it's my third layer cavern, isn't it? Yeah, down here. I've got, um, yeah, muddy cavern floors. And these piles of mud don't grow moss. Uh, they'll grow trees, but they won't grow moss uh, on the mud. Because it's, and I think that's represented as a, because it's a pile of mud rather than a, a muddied floor. You can see that it's like the moss is there but it's underneath the mud. So if I chop down that tree, I think moss would continue to grow in that spot there. And there's, uh, on some of these ramps, there's fungus as well. But yeah, these piles of mud are on top of the moss and uh, so unless you're lucky and you've got a ramp with some fungus in or something like that, if you open up a cavern floor and it's got mud on top of the moss, then yeah, you're, you're not going to, um, to get any spores in your fortress. And it won't regrow either. Uh, so, but that's the, that's the three ways. Uh, to give you underground pasture. Just go to the caverns where there's already moss, um, muddy some floor and let the moss spread, or let the moss spread onto some natural sand. Do the dwarfs keep, uh, clean the piles of mud if you put a chair on them? I don't know, I've never tried. Uh, let me just see where I open up onto the mud here. Should we try? Come and build a chair. Let's put it there. And um, we'll see what happens. Mm. Uh, I'll just need to look at the diplomat. I would like to buy um, some cheap leather to make sure that we've got enough leather next year. I would like to buy some silk cloth. Uh, plant cloth I'm good for. I would like to buy some wood. Um, and I think we're good on seeds. I might just get some pigtail seeds to be on the safe side. Right, good, thank you. Right, let's see what happens if they bring this down. And you can also do some, uh, like, fake above ground, underground yeah. um, growing of, of plants and grasses. Mm -hmm. So by ink you take anywhere that's been exposed to sunlight and cover it over with a, a ceiling or you know floors from the the floor the, the z levels above um that will enclose that area uh safely assuming it's all walled off as well but it will continue to be considered outdoors yeah for the purpose of um plant growing yeah. like for farm plots and for grasses as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you absolutely. 
Yeah. So it's similar to um, finding natural moss underground or mud muddying up stone underground. But for example, um, in my fort, I've dug out like a recreational area, um, just one Z level down from the surface and then floored it off from, from, the, from above. Uh -huh. um, and then created like meeting rooms in there and um, pastures as well mm. to, uh, as, to serve as a grazing area. So the animals come in there and graze on grass yeah. that is growing technically underground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but the the dwarves come in and, and meet in there as well, and it, it fends off the cave adaptation. Yeah, because it's um, still lit. Or at least it, it used to be a thing. Yeah, because it's yeah, still yeah, technically still lit. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the, the light somehow passes through the floors, um, mm. but can't pass through solid rock or soil. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a magic world. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got another diplomat. Let me just find out what this is about. Oh, the head's human treasurer. Oh, they would like to know what I'd like to buy from them next year. Hmm. Okay, I'll buy some leather from you. I'll buy some wood from you. And humans. It's a strange time of year for the human diplomat to uh, turn up. Something must have delayed them. Uh, and whips. Always bring me your whips. Mm. It's the only place where we can get whips. Right. Are, are whips any good for something? Or? Yeah, whips are the best of the weapons that you can get, really. Uh, they they're a they have a small range on them and they're a crushing weapon so if you can get whips that are made out of a dense material like silver silver whips are the the best whips that you can buy um, because they're a crushing weapon but they've got a very very small surface area they can cut through armor uh, they are they're very, very overpowered weapons. Uh, so very good to put in weapon traps as well. Okay, we're getting this. Uh... Oh, look, yes, it's worked. Huh, interesting. Never tried that before. So, yeah. So if we wanted to clear out the mud from here, we could just put furniture down. It'd be interesting to see if that works with other furniture, mm. like tables as well. Indeed. Well, let's see what we can clear out down here. We'll put down a table. I like how like it actually looks like the table is sunk into the mud there. Uh, let's put down... I'm pretty sure the workshops don't work. And I think if I was to put down a floor, it would remove the moss as well. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna make a tavern in the in the bottom of the world right now. <laughs> <have a> moss. <laughs> uh, let's try a chest. Yeah, we seem, for some reason, we've got a whole bunch, we've got an elf's caravan's worth of stuff. Um, I don't know quite what happened to the elves that died on our staircase, I don't know why. Have we got an instrument? We'll try putting an instrument down here. Right, let's see out of those things. <laughs> Thank you for indulging my scientific query. You're very welcome. Okay, tables work. Uh, 
musical instruments work. Mm -hmm. Although, it looks like um, that's removed the moss as well. Uh, so is the chest. Interesting. Okay. Now, I don't know whether that was because the the ground underneath had no moss yeah that's what i'm thinking shall we try moving those like we can see there there's definitely moss there yeah so we'll get that removed and there's definitely moss here where that dog is Okay, we'll put that chest there. And then we'll put down that copper pevit there. Okay, yeah, so the moss has mm -hmm. survived. So it must have just been that it's a patchy floor. Yeah, so, um, huh, but interesting. So we can remove the mud, and I, I didn't know we could do it that way. So it's, uh, yeah, that was good information. Yeah, I'm guessing it's it must be a, a contaminant thing, maybe. Yeah, we'll have to try it elsewhere so. to see if they remove things like blood or water before putting um, other furniture down. And we've learnt a little bit about barn owl training, a little bit about wild boar training. Uh, in fact, we've now attained a general familiarity with wild boar training. We know a little bit about honey badgers and a little bit about capybaras. Um, because our traders are here, they will take that information back to the mountain homes with them. Um, we're coming up to the end of the stream actually but I'll just let the traders leave because they shouldn't be here much longer we'll let them leave the map and I think we should get a notification about that uh, let's just pick these things up from here and um, we'll head back upstairs and have a look and see how much more training is going on yeah, I think they might be about ready to leave. Yeah, they're uh, they're embarking right now. Just packing up their stuff. Oh, what's all this? Pile of vomit? Why have we got piles of vomit? I don't know, but let's get some more pigs butchered, I think. I'm working my way through the female pigs. I figure that's the, the way to reduce the number of, um, of pigs the fastest. Because they're, they're breeding at an alarming rate. Okay, don't want to overdo it. Uh, no, I think we can take them all out. And how's the animal training coming on? Train, train, semi-wild, semi-wild. So, yeah, I think... So, animals that are in cages are not supposed to be able to breed. But I think I captured some pregnant animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
yeah, I've had that happen with a, an undead experiment. <laughs> One was captured in a in a siege. Yeah. And they gave birth inside the cage. Um. And then the the the, the offspring of that undead creature was um, considered friendly to the fort, <laughs> yeah. while inside the cage with its hostile parent. <laughs> Now, some animals, I think, um, these water buffalo that are stray water buffalo and a tame, because they are an animal that's available to our home civilization, I think, I don't think that they, I think they're fully domesticated now. Uh, let's try releasing them into a pasture and see if that's the case. I need somewhere where they can graze, though. Oops, wrong way. There's not much grazing space down here. We're going to have to go on yeah, the same... It, it will show whether they're domesticated or not in the, um, the pets and livestock list. Let's see, stray water buffalo? Yeah. Yeah, domesticated. Um, might just butcher them actually, because they're gonna starve in the cages now. Because uh, if they don't need training, and they're a grazing animal, and they're in a cage, um. Yeah, domesticated animals in cages that are grazers will starve. Mm -hmm. The wild animals in cages, they're fine. Like they've been in those cages for possibly a couple of years. Yeah, it's like suddenly they forgot how to eat for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's the wagons leaving. We'll just see if we get a notification about these guys. Oh yeah, there we go. There's the forgotten beasts dealing with all of the hungry heads on the map. <laughs> it's one benefit of a, a one by one area, I suppose, because <laughs> they can they can always see each other, or they they're more likely to run across each other. Indeed. got a notification about our civilization having learnt something. I was expecting it. Yeah, I don't recall seeing a notification on in my one. Mm. But there's so much training spam that happens in mine that, that <laughs> it tends yeah. to push out all other logs. Yeah. And I'm not sure whether it might be let's just open some doors let the diplomat out I'm not sure whether it's when the diplomat leaves or whether it's after the the trade caravan leaves uh, and I've not seen it since version 50 because I've hang on we got yeah don't want piglets running out here
No, I don't think we're going to be getting a message anytime soon. So it might be that we don't get the message anymore. Or it might be that something's changed about it. Or it might be that we need to wait for the diplomat to leave. That bit I'm not sure about. Oh, and we've got a strange mood. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I think we should... I think we need to leave it here anyway. Yeah. Uh, we've gone way past time. So, um... A little bit past time. Yeah. A little bit, indeed. Um... I would like to give you guys a shout-out before you leave, so 